so hello everybody today we are going to discuss about sustainability tools and approaches from in the context of cities and communities so in this particular context we will be discussing about circles of sustainability so if you remember in the very first week of this particular course in the second lecture we had touched upon this concept circles of sustainability when we were trying to discuss about various sustainability approaches in different contexts and trying to understand the meaning of sustainability then we will look at the four circles which help you to which are part of this method which is circles of sustainability this lecture is prepared using the content from this following website you can go to this particular website and read through more about each of the topics that will be discussed in this lecture also the website contains many other tools project examples and so on which can be very helpful for you if you want to learn more about this particular approach so circles of sustainability what is it so it's a method for understanding and assessing sustainability and for managing projects directed towards socially sustainable outcomes so that's very important the socially sustainable outcomes part the method is mostly used for cities and urban settlements because cities and urban settlements they are made up of human beings who populate those uh, cities and urban settlements and make them uh, the way they are and hence in order to achieve sustainable outcomes over there the social dimension is very very important of course we are not saying that the economic and the environmental dimension are not important they are very important as well but the social dimension takes a big priority so this particular method has been developed in a manner that the projects can be directed towards socially sustainable outcomes along with a focus on economic as well as the ecological aspects in this method you will also see that the social dimension has been further bifurcated into two dimensions that is political and cultural that shows how important that is so rather than three dimensions here in circles of sustainability we talk about four dimensions ecology economics political and cultural so the method originates from the circles project the circles project was convened by the institute for culture and society at western sydney university and the senate department for the environment transport and climate protection in berlin there are many associated uh, partners in particular the metropolis the world association for major metropolises but its base has now broadened to a great extent a collaborative network of colleagues and associates together are part of this particular project since 2007 are and are contributing towards theoretical development case study development and so on so circles of social life approach is something from which this particular um, uh, circles of sustainability comes up so circles of sustainability is a method which provides practical tools for creating sustainable cities and communities it is part of the larger circles of social life approach developed through collaboration between various organizations like the metropolis the un global compact cities program the senate department for the environment transport and climate protection and other organizations such as international real estate federation cultural development network and world vision so what is circles of social life it's an approach that guides engaged and collaborative practice in making our cities locals and organizations more sustainable resilient adaptable and livable and circles of sustainability is a method in this particular approach so how does this circles approach work so there are four key questions which are supposed to be asked each of them are related to the four circles what are these four circles so the first circle is called as the profile circles the second is called as the process circles the third is called as engagement circles and the fourth is called as knowledge circles 
So profile circles, it helps to build sustainability across all domains of social life. So as I told, as we have been discussing uh, during the entire duration of this course, dimensions of sustainability, ecology, economy and social and in this particular context since our focus is on social uh, is, uh, aspects is quite uh, big, hence we divide the social into two, political and cultural. It also makes sense because now we are going to talk about cities and communities specifically. Hence, uh, the bifurcation into political and cultural of the social dimension becomes very effective and efficient way of dealing with this particular context. So, profile circus deals with this particular aspect. Next comes the process circus. It offers a practical method for sensitively defining, measuring and communicating responses to critical issues. We will get into details of each of these processes and that will make it more clear what it implies. Then comes engagement circles. Because we are talking about cities and communities, we need to bring in engagement. So the engagement circle provides a way of bringing together different constituents. These might be different communities, these might be different kinds of organizations, these can be different individuals and so on. So the, uh, the different constituents in integrated partnerships. The fourth circle is knowledge circle. It guides a city creatively through the processes of understanding the inevitable tensions and contradictions in any complex system. So all cities, all communities, all settlements are very complex system. So the knowledge circle deals with understanding how people deal with this particular complex system. You must be wondering why circles? So, uh, when we are talking about social life, the best way of thinking about it and about and how do we depict it is in recursive nature, something which goes in circles. Let us take an example. Say for example, a city uh, identifies that plastics are a big source of pollution in that particular city and this major chunk of plastic pollution is caused because of all the poly bags which are used by people to purchase their grocery and all other such things. So as a result of this, the mm, city authorities decide that let us mm, say that in order to mm, buy your mm, products in a mm, poly bag, you need to pay for the poly bag. So for a small poly bag say 4 rupees, for a large poly bag say 15 rupees. When this particular law comes in, this law comes into effect because the city of uh, city uh, uh, governance body observed that uh, pollution is being caused because of this particular uh, object. Now people when this uh, new rule comes, they will react to this particular uh, uh, law. Say for example, people feel that okay, when I am buying a product which is worth 500 rupees, so I bought 500 rupees of products and for housing that 500 rupees product, I have to pay 15 rupees extra for that big poly bag, which is not a very big deal. So it is more convenient, I do not have to carry my bags. So say in the 15 rupees category, there was no reduction in plastic bag consumption. But in the 4 rupees category, there was an initial dip in uh, consumption because maybe the small poly bags are used for buying smaller quantities, say it is used for buying vegetables which is might be worth just 100 rupees. So people might be thinking, okay, I do not want to spend this 4 rupees. So initially they started bringing their own bags. So a dip in pollution due to poly bags was observed in the small bag category. In the large bag category, category it was observed maybe because it is 15 rupees, so people are not throwing it away, they are keeping it with them. But eventually people get used to it and maybe after a few months, 
time people give in to the temptation of convenience so that is don't carry your own bags pay the 4 rupees pay the 15 rupees buy the new bag and still keep on discarding them now the city government again observed that okay the pollution level which uh, pollution uh, caused due to poly bags which saw a dip it again went up to the previous level of the law so they realize okay this law does not work let's bring in a new law we ban all kinds of poly bags now no shop is allowed to uh, give um, products in a poly bag they have to use newspaper or they will um, or the customer has to buy uh, bring their own um, uh, bags again there will be a change in behavior amongst consumers amongst um, uh, the um, shop owners also it will depend how strictly the city is imposing these laws are they conducting regular checks so here you can see this whole social life was so recursive laws kept on being changed people responded in certain manners because of the laws which again influenced the laws back so that's why the concept of circles because best way of thinking about and depicting recursive nature of social life is in circles and not in linear lines so it's not like you add mm, 10 grams of sugar into water which makes water sweet by certain degree or it dissolves to a certain degree and then i can say i can have a linear line of cause and effect but here in social life it's recursive hence the concept of circles so this is the website they also have a book which i will give, show you the link to the book at the end of the uh, lecture and if you are interested you can also read through that uh, book it's not a compulsory material for this course so this particular website talks about all the um, uh, circles so this one has all the circles the tools the cities where it has been used projects principles publications and so on so let's start with the circles so we will first discuss about the profile circles so profile circles as we said they are uh, meant for presenting complex data about a city urban settlement or region what are these complex data they are about ecology economics politics and culture of that particular city urban settlement or region so let's do a quick recap from our week one lecture two so this is what we presented circles of sustainability this model is now being used by organizations such as the united nations cities programs and metropolis so here you can see that this is a kind of a mm, mm, circular diagram which here where you can do rating so the rating starts from vibrant up to critical then i have my four dimensions ecology culture politics and economics and say in ecology the first one stands for materials and energy the second uh, one stands for water and air so i can rate okay in terms of material and energy i can read that my that particular city is in a critical situation because it is red whereas let's say um, if i try to read economics and i see wealth and distribution so it is over here which means it is at a satisfactory level so this was the circus of sustainability representation of melbourne city in 2011 this one is from johannesburg from 2013 this one is for delhi from 2012 so when you place all these uh, city maps close to each other you can have a good comparative um, uh, study it helps in visualizing it quickly tells you where all we need to do improvements and where all we are performing uh, well so let's try to understand each of these dimensions so the first dimension the ecology the ecological domain is defined as the practices and meanings that occur across the intersection between the social and the natural realms focusing on the important dimension of human engagement with and within nature but also including the built environment so as we had started with uh, this lecture i told you that it was very important that the circles of sustainability it's 
major focus was social sustainability. So, even when we are looking into ecology and economics, uh, we are looking it with respect to the social realm, with respect to the uh, since in ecology it is social and the nat natural realms their interaction. So, how do we do that? We will see how about the human engagement with and within nature. So, how I am interacting with the nature and inside the nature, within the nature and it also includes the built environment. As we discussed in our lecture on sustainability uh, tools for architecture, you already know that about 30 to 40 percent of global energy consumption is happening due to our built environment, our buildings. So, in the dimension ecology, the sub dimensions are materials and energy, water and air, flora and fauna, habitat and settlements, built form and transport, embodiment and sustenance, emission and waste. Each of these are further divided into mm, seven sub categories. So, like materials and energy, it consists of availability and abundance. I think the meanings are pretty much uh, clear. So, I will not go into the details of the meaning of these words. When we go through this entire list, you can see how uh, beautiful the connection is between a city or a region or a community and the human element involved and its interaction with the natural realm. So, in materials energy, we have availability and abundance soil and its fertility, minerals and metals, electricity and gas, petroleum and biofuels, renewables and recyclables. The last point of each and every category is monitoring and reflection. They are both very important in order to achieve sustainability whether they are present or not. Then comes water and air, vitality and viability, water quality and potability. Potability is whether that water is drinkable or not. Air quality and respiration, climate and temperature, greenhouse gases and carbon, adaptation and mitigation processes, monitoring and reflection. Then comes flora and fauna which consists of complexity and resilience biodiversity and ecosystem diversity, plants and insects, trees and shrubs, wild animals and birds, domestic animals and species relations, monitoring and reflection. Then comes habitat and settlement. It consists of topography and livability, original habitat and native vegetation, parklands and reserves, land use and building, abode and housing, maintenance and retrofitting, monitoring and reflection. Then comes the built form and transport, orientation and spread, proximity and access, mass transit and public transport, motorized transport and roads, non-motorized transport and walking paths, seaports and airports, monitoring and reflection. The next one, the sixth one is embodiment and sustenance physical health and vitality, reproduction and mortality, exercise and fitness, hygiene and diet, nutrition and nourishment, agriculture and husbandry, monitoring and evaluation. Then the final one is emissions and waste, which consists of pollution and contamination, hard waste and rubbish, severage and sanitation, drainage and effluence, processing and composting, recycling and reuse, monitoring and evaluation. The next dimension in the profile circles is economics. The economic domain is defined as the practices and meanings associated with the production, use and management of resources, where the concept of resources is used in the broadest sense of that word. So, how do I define resources? So, if you see through this list, you will get to know how broadly resource has been defined. So, when I see production and resourcing, that is one type of resources, exchange and transfer. We can do many types of exchange and transfer. So, let us go directly into the next slide, which details out and gives you a bigger picture of all the different types of resources that we are talking about in the economics domain. 
So, production and resourcing we are talking about prosperity and resilience, manufacture and fabrication, extraction and harvesting. Say for example, there might be a situation a particular region or a city it is completely not involved into any kind of an extraction process. They might be involved in some kind of a harvesting process. So, whatever the situation uh, applicable is. Then art and craft, design and innovation, human and physical resources. So, you see we started with physical resources, infrastructure related resources and now when we talk about human and physical resources, we are also talking about human resources and its relationship between with physical resources, monitoring and reflection. Then comes exchange and transfer, so reciprocity and mutuality, goods and services, finance and taxes. Now, you can see we have brought in the financial resources also over here trade and tourism, aid and remittance, depth and liability, finally monitoring and reflection. Then comes accounting and regulation, regulation, transparency and fairness, finance and money, goods and services, land and property, labor and employment, taxes and levies, monitoring and reflection. Then comes consumption and use, appropriate use and reuse, food and drink goods and services, water and electricity, petroleum and metals. So, when we were talking about in the previous uh, in slide, you saw petroleum and other fuels which came in the ecological dimension. When we were talking about that dimension, we would be uh, assessing the situation as per in terms of ecology. When we are in this particular category which is about economics, we will be analyzing petroleum and metals with respect to consumption and use. Then comes promotion and dissemination, monitoring and reflection, labor and welfare, livelihoods and work, connection and vocation, participation and equity, capacity and productivity, health and safety, care and support, monitoring and reflection. The sixth one is technology and infrastructure, so appropriateness and robustness communications and information, transport and movement, construction and building, education and training, medicine and health treatment, monitoring and reflection. The final one is about wealth and distribution. It talks about accumulation and mobilization, social wealth and heritage, wages and income, housing and subsistence, equity and inclusion, redistribution and apportionment, monitoring and reflection. Let us go to the dimension called politics. So, the political is defined as the practices and meanings associated with basic issues of social power such as organization, authorization, legitimization and regulation. So, politics does not imply over here about political parties. What it implies is the issues of social power which might be as part of an organization because every organization, every family also has different layers of social power with each and every individual, with each and every entity. So, the domain it deals with practices and meanings associated with basic issues of social power such as in organizations, in authorization, in legitimation and regulation. The parameters of this area extend beyond the conventional sense of politics to include not only issues of public and private governance, but more broadly social relations in general. So, it consists of organizations and mm, governance, law and justice, communication and critique, representation and negotiation, security and accord, dialogue and reconciliation, ethics and accountability. When you go through this whole list and when we go through the more granulated list, you can see more in detail that how we are talking about social power, the issues of social power. So, when I am talking about organization and governance, I am talking about legitimacy as well as respect, leadership and agency, planning and vision, administration and bureaucracy, authority and sovereignty, transparency and clarity and monitoring and reflection. When I talk about law and justice, I am talking about rights and rules, order and civility, obligations and responsibilities, impartiality and equality, 
fairness and prudence, judgment and penalty, monitoring and reflection, communication and critique, interchange and expression, news and information, accessibility and openness, opinion and analysis, dissent and protest, privacy and respect, monitoring and reflection. Let us go to representation and negotiation. It is about agency and advocacy, participation and inclusion, democracy and liberty, access and consultation, civility and committee, contestation and standing, monitoring and reflection. You can see with this finer granularities into which each of these sub uh, categories have been defined. They define the scope of uh, that particular topic and you can see how uh, nicely they are covering a wide spectrum of all forms of social power which can be uh, take which need to be taken into consideration in the context of sustainability for cities or any kind of settl urban settlements. Then comes so uh, the security and accord. So, human security and defense, safety and support, personal and domestic security, protection and shelter, refuge and sanctuary, insurance and assurance, monitoring and reflection. Then comes dialogue and reconciliation where we are talking about processes and recognition, truth and verity, mediation and intercession, truth and faith, remembrance and redemption, reception and hospitality, monitoring and reflection. Finally, our last one which is the ethics and accountability. It talks about principles and protocols, obligations and responsibility, integrity and virtue, observance and visibility prescription and contention, acquittal and consequence monitoring and reflection. The fourth dimension of the profile circle is culture. So, the culture domain is defined as the practices, discourses. Discourses are about all um, materials which can be used for educational purposes. So, because culture is something that is learnt and hence we are talking about uh, practices you learn through practices, discourses you also learn through learning material and material expressions. So, say for example, a particular um, uh, community can be defined in um, can be understood or can be um, can create its own definition with say for example, the kind of materials they own, the way they organize their house, the kind of furniture that they own. So, culture can be also uh, learnt or understood through the material expressions. So, the cultural domain is defined as the practices, discourses and material expressions which over time express continuities and discontinuities of social meaning. Not uh, necessarily all cultural aspects like practices, discourses and material expressions they do not have like infinite continuity. They have certain continuity, certain aspects live for a long duration, certain aspects discontinue more quickly. So, these aspects and their continuities and discontinuities and their social meaning created as a result of that. So, say for example, it consists of identity and engagement, creativity and recreation, memory and projection, belief and ideas, gender and generations inquiry and learning, well-being and health. So, in identity and engagement, we are talking about diversity and difference, belonging and community, ethnicity and language, religion and faith, friendship and affinity, home and place, monitoring and reflection. Creativity and recreation, aesthetics and design, performance and representation, innovation and adaptation, celebrations and festivals, sport and play, leisure and relaxation, monitoring and reflection. When you go through this um, uh, all the scope of it, you can see how broad the meaning of um, uh, culture is. You can see all the practices. So, say for example, play can be practice, performance can be a practice which are culturally determined. Whereas, when we want to talk about material expressions, we are talking about home and place because home and place they will consist of many different materials which give you the material expression which might be peculiar to that particular cultures 
culture and it might represent some kind of continuity and discontinuity of social meanings. Then comes memory and projection, tradition and authenticity. So, when we talk about tradition and authenticity, it might also involve things like practices, n n discourses as well as n the material expression. Heritage and inheritance, history and records, indigeneity and custom, imagination and hope, inspiration and vision, monitoring and reflection. Then comes beliefs and ideas, knowledge and interpretation, ideology and imaginaries, reason and rationalization, religiosity and spirituality, rituals and symbols, emotions and passions, monitoring and reflection. Very important in understanding social meanings is gender and generations, equality and respect, sexuality and desire, family and kinship, birth and babyhood, childhood and youth, mortality and care, monitoring and reflection. A simple thing like birth and babyhood, if you look up in different cultures, they have different meanings, they have different practices associated with it. Inquiry and learning curiosity and discovery, deliberation and debate, research and application, teaching and training, writing and codification, meditation and reflexibility and finally, monitoring and reflection. The last aspect is well-being and health which consists of integrity and autonomy, bodies and corporeal knowledge, mental health and pleasure, care and comfort, inclusion and participation, cuisines and emotional nourishment and monitoring and reflection. That was about the profile circles, now let us come to the process circles. So, process circles are pathways to guide practitioners through the process of making a significant impact upon a designated locale such as a city, a town or an urban region. So, say you as a designer who want to create the impact, the sustainable impact you will have to follow certain processes to create this particular impact. So, the process circle deals with the same. So, the process circle consists of stages and phases. So, the stages and phases are commit, engage, assess, define, implement, measure and communicate. So, each of these stage consists of certain phases you can take these actions and some of these mm, actions can be taken using certain tools which have been uh, designed in uh, the scope of this particular circles project. So, the website gives you an idea. So, if we go to this particular website here you can see tools, you can see many of these tools available over here in uh, this particular section. So, let us see what the, do we, what are the phases involved in the commit. So, commit is the stage 1 where you try to get a firm commitment to make a difference uh, not only you, but there will be many partners involved. So, when we go to the next circle, the engagement circle, in the engagement circle helps us in identifying various partners. So, this uh, uh, commit in the first phase is a firm commitment to make a difference from all those partners that you have identified. Then establish management structure very important otherwise a project at that scale is not possible to manage. Then you choose framing considerations. What does that mean? It is like you have to select the general issues, you have to select general objectives, you have to select spatial and temporal frame for consideration. So, what is the space in which you will be doing your um, intervention and the um, kind of time frames that you are targeting. So, within say next 10 years I want to achieve um, goal X can be one of the ways of seeing it. The last phase of commit is uh, you assign the resources for required resources for the project. Then comes engage, where you consult key constituent groups and individuals which you can identify using the engagement circles. Then you entrust collaborators and form a critical reference group. 
then you empower local communities for which you can do uh, you see critical community feedback at this particular phase you can also use the frogs collective action toolkit which we had discussed in uh, when we were trying to discuss about the msds methodology you can also the next phase is accord recognition to partners then comes the stage assess where you determine the knowledge and resources so you determine no local knowledge you determine strengths and weaknesses you determine the contested social themes all those social themes wherein there is some kind of contestment so in order to do the first that is determine local knowledge you can use the knowledge profile process to determine the contested social themes you can use a social themes process available on this particular website then next step is analyze the data and documents to do that you first analyze existing public data so data which is available publicly then you analyze existing policy documents and research then you analyze existing indicators the next step is research social context where you do research with community responses for which you will use the social life questionnaire tool then you do the research on urban context for by using the urban profile process then you do research on individual responses by using that strategic interviews tool the last phase of assess is project outcomes where you say project future scenarios so this is like scenario projection process tool project program scenarios where you use the intelligent cities simulator tool the next stage in this process is define where you clarify definitions forces and risks so clarify general issues and objectives clarify materiality considerations clarify driving forces and risks by using the general issues clarification process tool next you identify critical issues and indi indicators you identify critical issues and objectives resolve tensions between objectives identify core indicators choose targets by using the critical issue identification process too then you refine the project param parameters because now you have good clarity regarding all definitions forces risks critical issues and indicators so you can refine your project parameters and you can also review your project plan once that phase is done then you get into the implementation phase where you authorize the plan enable project support realize with uh, constituents revise the plan periodically very important stage measure and communicate so after you have done the implementation phase you have to do the measure so where you have to monitor the indicators document project implementation and reassess profiles and processes you again take up the profile circle and you can do a reassessment so reassess social life questionnaire and evaluate changes reassess urban profile and evaluate changes reassess social themes profile and evaluate changes so all the um, tasks that you had done in the first um, few phases to get the clarity and definition you do a reassessment on all of them to see and evaluate the changes then comes your final evaluate the project then you need to communicate so you have to translate themes and learning publicize the process and outcomes of the process report to all constituents and relevant agencies advise communities and all levels of government on the basis of your learnings and project outcome measurements so as we discussed here you will find all the tools which we need for doing this process circles phase next comes the third circle which is the engagement circle it is to sensitize practitioners to the broad range of partners and constituents relevant to working on the complex issues associated with urban change so let's see how it looks like it consists of civil society governance institutions business organizations 
and research based entities. So, again a similar kind of a visual representation can be used which consists of civil society, research based entities, governance institutions and business organizations. So, in civil societies we can have individuals and communities, we can have community based and faith based organizations, social movements and networks, non government organizations and foundations. So, when you use this engagement circle you can pick up each one of them and try to see how can you involve them in the most vibrant manner or what is their current contribution where are they currently located. In the research based entities the first one is individual researchers and research groups, research centers and institutions because they have an organizational structure to it they might have more mm, infrastructure. Then universities and colleges very important because they are also research based entities. Then you have think tanks and research based foundations, not necessarily you will have each one of them available for a given mm, situation, but mm, how you can involve as many of them as possible to get a full picture. Then comes governance institutions, these can be elders and councils. So, in many um, regions it is the elders of a particular um, area who are considered to be the most important um, decision makers. So, they might have a huge influence in many social setups it is also the elders who have a lot of um, governing power. So, if say for example, in the family. So, governance institution does not necessarily imply things related to government. So, anything which is meant for governance, municipal and provincial governments, state and government organizations and international and global gov governance organizations. Then comes our business organizations, so we have to include small and medium enterprises, corporations and large enterprises, cooperatives and straight run en enterprises, non-profit and social enterprises. What is a social enterprise? So, a normal enterprise a normal company it is a which is a for profit company their major aim of setting up the company is to make profit. A social enterprise is an enterprise whose aim main aim is to bring in social development. They are not necessarily meant for profit but something which is not meant for profit or say non profit does not necessarily mean that uh, they will go into losses. They have to somehow make the revenue through certain sources otherwise they cannot sustain their mm, activities. So, social enterprise or not non profit does not imply that they are mm, uh, going to give away things for free or they are not going to make money it does not mean that it what it means is the main motive of the enterprise is not to make profit it is to do social development, but they have to earn their revenues in order to keep their process running. Then finally, we come to our fourth circle which is called as the knowledge circle. It is a very important circle, but maybe if you are in at a bachelor's uh, education level at this moment and maybe for some of you even at masters level it might be little difficult to understand all the um, domains of the knowledge circles because it is little bit more mm, complicated, but there are certain levels which are more easier to understand. So, the knowledge circles it is meant to sensitize us to different ways of knowing about the way world. This can happen by, so how can you know about the world? The first way is the sensory experience it is called as feeling, then is practical consciousness or pragmatics. Third is reflective consciousness it is when you reflect upon something and the fourth one which is very difficult to understand maybe at this particular stage is called as the reflexive knowing or reflexivity. So, in the context of uh, 
knowledge circles we again depict it using similar kind of a graphical representation consisting of feeling pragmatics reflection and reflexivity so um, before going into the details of each of these we will take a quick snapshot a snapshot of what do they mean so feeling consists of sensate knowing that is knowing through your sense organs perceptive knowing emotional knowing and revelatory knowing pragmatics consists of experiential knowing intuitive knowing tacit knowing and situated knowing reflection consists of trained knowing contemplative knowing analytical knowing and theoretical knowing reflexivity consists of recursive knowing epistemological knowing meta analytical knowing and meta theoretical knowing one very important thing to keep in mind in this particular uh, knowledge circles is that these categories are not mutually exclusive many a times it might be uh, you might be a little confused like okay this can come under this aspects as well as this aspects so let's see in detail what each of these mean when i'm talking about feeling that is the first level we are talking about phenomenal sense that something exists in relation to us or has an impact on us so when i'm talking about sensate knowing it's like knowing through your sense organs uh, we have five sense organs uh, sight hearing touch smell and taste so when you know through by seeing something by hearing something by touching something by smelling something and by tasting something it's about sensate knowing and it comes under the category of feeling next one is perceptive knowing the cognitive apprehension of having experienced a sensation say for example you are in a particular mm, location you are in a particular location in the open area you find a beautiful smell first you find a smell then you have to go through certain cognitive process to know that it's a beautiful smell or it's a foul smell which we have learned that okay this one is a beautiful smell this is a foul smell once you know that okay this is a beautiful smell then your cognitive processes will try to identify where this beautiful smell might be coming from so if you are in say in a playground or in a garden you will assume that it is coming from some flowers if you do not recognize the um, flower you will still think it is coming from some flower but say if you are in a stadium you might assume that this beautiful smell is coming because of perfume so it was the same sensation the sensation related to smell which went through certain cognitive processes and built in other information like surroundings season and so on and main cognition of it so that is known as perceptive knowing then you have emotional knowing the somatic feeling of effect including the feeling for someone else a situation so anything which is to deal with emotions which might be evoked because of your activities or because of someone else say for example you feel proud because your city one the most sustainable city award is because the whole city achieved it together you so that's kind of an emotional knowing you might also feel proud because you were the one who envisioned that so the emotional knowing can come because of your situation or someone else's situation and it is a very important aspect for bringing in sustainability the last one in this category is revelatory knowing a visceral response to a particular scene or sound paradoxically experienced as out of the body say for example you go into a very calm and quiet place and at that particular location you have certain feelings because of the calmness and quietness of that place that feeling might be different for you and for different for another person and you might have some kind you might feel that okay this is an out of body experience so that is about a revelatory knowing you go to a calm and quiet garden you might have a different revelatory knowing you go to a calm and quiet building you will have a altogether different revelatory 
knowing. So, why feelings is very important in this particular context of circles of sustainability and especially social sustainability because feelings create through feelings you know something and that creates meanings for you, social meanings for you and when we can sust have sustainable social meanings, we can bring in uh, sustainability across all the four dimensions of the uh, that we discussed in the profile circles. Say for example, if I uh, uh, have a very good feeling about the gardens, about the fresh air in my city, I would the chances that I would like to protect that fresh air, those gardens from any source of pollution, any source of damage is quite high. Hence, this particular domain's importance. Let us go to the next knowledge circle. It is called as pragmatics. So, where you know because of practically or pragmatically how you do things or knowing how to go on. So, this is a knowledge which is gained through practical activities, through your experience. Hence, the first one here is about experiential knowing, knowledge based on doing things many times. So, say for example, if you do a particular craft many times, you gain knowledge, you gain practical, uh, practically how to do certain activities and that is because of experiential way of knowing. The, this kind of knowledge is helpful in order to achieve sustainability. So, say for example, if you want people to do certain activities, if you want people to compose their own ways, people should be able to do that activity at home. So, they should have the knowledge to do it and they should slowly get through experience get to become experts of doing it and then they can do it effectively. The next one is about intuitive knowing knowing through projecting possibilities. Say for example, if you know how to operate a um, uh, particular um, uh, android phone from company x and you get another phone from company y which is also android phone or say for example, it is a different kind of os, it is a windows os or it is an ios, you will have some kind of intuitive knowing because you know how to operate smartphones. So, you will be projecting possibilities, ok. So, there can be a back button, there will are possibilities of going back. So, how do I find out how to do that? So, in practical knowledge, you in intuitive knowing is very important. So, you have experience in certain other domains and because of those other domains, you can project the possibilities of your knowledge and intuitively know how to do this new thing. Say for example, if a large part of the community mm, has some knowledge of farming, then introducing urban farming to that community is very much easier because since they have some knowledge of farming from maybe their childhood, they intuitively learn urban farming more easily much better and it might be more acceptable to them as well. Then there is tacit knowledge, knowledge that comes that cannot be articulated or translated into written form. Say for example, if you watch a cooking show, they will tell you add salt as per taste. Why? They do not give you an exact quantity, exact amount, uh, so many grams of salt to be added because it is a tacit knowledge, it is a knowledge that cannot be articulated or translated into written form. So, there are many factors responsible, say for example, there are different types of salt altogether. So, your salt might be more salty than someone else's salt. Also, everybody has different tastes for mm, salt. Some people like less salt, some people like more salt. Also, say for example, the mm, kind of ingredients that you put in mm, might also vary to a certain extent, which might also require changes in the quantity of salt added. Hence, it is always said add salt as per your taste. So, this is kind of a tacit knowledge, a knowledge that cannot be articulated or trans, uh, translated into written form, but it is gained because you did that activity so many times, you cooked so many times that you know how much salt to put. Uh, situated knowing, so knowledge that is specific to a particular place or time. 
say for example because we deal with many different people so i know that with person a i have to deal in a certain manner with person b i have to deal it with another manner when i go to an organization i have to deal with them in a certain manner to another organization i have to deal in a different way so this is called as situated knowing you again gained it because of your practical ways of how to do things how to make things happen and it is related to a particular situation or a particular place or a particular time this one is very important because if you want to people to act sustainability to behave sustainability you need them to have certain kind of pragmatic knowledge and you also need to influence that pragmatic knowledge the third one is about reflection so how people reflect upon their felt experience and practical knowledge so the previous two knowledge the feeling and the pragmatics reflection is about how people reflect upon those two so the first one is trained knowing knowledge based on learning supported by teachers and our curriculum so you might get felt experience as well as practical knowledge because the teachers or certain curriculum taught you something so this is trained knowledge and you reflect upon it so say for example after you go through this course you have learned certain aspects of sustainability which i presented to you after that you will reflect on that course when you are trying to answer the questions or when you are trying to apply it on your own project contemplative knowing that is knowledge that emerges in the saying or the thinking so it's simply like you are trying to say something say for example when i'm talking about this particular course i'm discussing it with you at that very time while i'm saying while i'm thinking about it i might i'm also reflecting on what i'm saying and what i'm thinking so that is about contemplative knowing analytical knowing knowledge based on breaking things down into their constituent parts it is also called as deductive knowledge say for example if i do not know anything about a camera and i want to learn about a camera but i know about certain aspects of it i know how a battery works i know how a memory card works so what i am doing over here is i am dividing the camera into its constituent parts and those constituent i know about those constituent parts so i know have practical knowledge of ex- felt experience of those constituent parts and then i am doing an analyt- gathering analytical knowledge by breaking down it into parts the last one here is about theoretical knowing so theoretical work that makes a claim about the determination framing or meaning of something so when i present a theory in front you of you about sustainability you have a theoretical knowing of it then you will reflect upon it to apply it the last uh, dimension of the knowledge circle is reflexivity so the knowledge that comes in interrogating the nature of knowing while seeking to understand the world so it's the highest level of knowing and it comes when you are trying to know about the whatever you are trying to know about when you are trying to understand a phenomenon when you are trying to understand the world that time you are asking this very question like why this knowledge how this knowledge that time you are trying to do reflexivity so recursive knowing knowledge that bears back upon itself and constantly interrogates the basis of its knowledge so say for example i tell you memory and projection is very important for sustainability when you try to understand okay from where did this whole concept came memory and uh, uh, recall is very important for sustainability what you are trying to do is recursive knowing you are trying to know where the basics of this knowledge came where did uh, somebody come to know from that uh, recognition uh, sorry uh, memory and uh, projection is very important for sustainability next one is about epistemological knowing so knowledge about the different forms of knowledge that is classic epistemology understood in the sense of the study of knowledge if you are not able to follow this particular slide very much 
do not worry because this one is this topic is little beyond the level of bachelor's and a master's student but if you are able to understand it then well and good so uh, epistemological knowledge where you are trying to understand the different forms of knowledge so like you saw in our particular example we talk spoke about sustainability from agriculture from cities from uh, architecture from product design perspective so there are different forms of knowledge for the same domain called as sustainability and when i try to uh, compare all of them what i am trying to do is knowledge about the different forms of knowledge then comes meta analytical knowing analysis that reflects back on the basis of its analysis so in other words this is a kind of knowing in which the subject and the object are brought into constant dialogue so analysis that reflects back on the basis of analysis so i give you a tool for analysis and you try to identify okay on what basis that tool was formed you are try to doing analysis back on the basis of the analysis then comes meta theoretical knowing so theoretical work that seeks to understand the world while theorizing the possibilities of its own theories so when you have a theory and you take that theory and try to understand how that theory has been theorized so the reading material for this particular aspect is this website you can also go through this book this book has been written mm, down by james paul in the next lecture we will be talking about our last approach for sustainability tools uh, in the segment sustainability tools and approaches and it will be about carbon footprint so carbon footprint has been a very mm, loosely used uh, mm, terminology you might hear it in mm, various ad campaigns and so on but in order to be able to apply it in any fruitful manner we actually need to understand in depth what this carbon footprint is all about how can we use it to bring in any difference thank you mm -hmm.